Hi, I'm Big Ben. Welcome to this week's episode of Equip Tips, where we're going to be diving into the land of filters. How about you put on your UV glass and follow me? Filters, filters, filters. Some of us own them, some of us don't. Let's talk about the purpose of filters and some of the types. First one we're going to be talking about is the good old clumsy filter, which I call a UV filter. And all a UV filter is, in other terms, contains an element of glass in it that is supposed to cut down the dispersion of UV light coming into the lens. This is great, it'll give you a little bit more contrast, maybe help for you landscape guys that are working with uh, poor atmospheric conditions. But the main purpose of a UV lens is to protect your glass. I see a lot of guys out there, they go buy that nice 70 to 200 you know, millimeter lens. And the next thing they know, they are at a wedding and the mother-in-law comes up and wants some pictures. She smacks the camera with the purse, the lens breaks, cops are called, someone goes to jail. It ends up on a really bad note. So basically, if anything else, for any type of lens that you own, go ahead and go buy a UV filter. They're pretty cheap, they don't cost a lot. They simply screw onto the front elements of your lens. The good thing is, is that once you have a UV filter on the front of your glass or lens, that now if anything hits your lens, you scrape your lens or bump it, you're gonna ruin the filter and scratch up the filter versus ruining and scratching up your nice expensive piece of glass, which in my opinion is a great insurance policy. Me, I'm out shooting in some weird conditions some days. I'm out in the water, I'm out up in the mountains, I'm bumping, I'm, you know, bumping stuff all the time. I have actually bumped my filters on occasion and scratched them up and ruined them. And if I had not had that filter there, I would have been out of a really nice piece of glass. Some of the other types of filters out there, and one that I am a big fan of is polarizer filters. Well, what on earth is a polarized filter? Well, just like you can buy polarized glasses that cut out the reflection of light, some of you fishermen out there or boaters out there might have wear polarized glasses to take the glare off the water. All the polarized filter does is does the same thing for our camera. We use it in situations where we want to get rid of the glare off something. I commonly shoot pinups, I shoot hot rods, and I shoot cars. And there are times where I am shooting someone inside a vehicle and whatever light I have there, whether it be natural light or a strobe or a flash, is, is hitting, hitting that windshield and reflecting light off that back into my face. So it looks like this big obnoxious piece of glass and I can't see my subject inside. So what do I do? I throw a polarized filter on my lens And with DSLRs, they have what they call circular polarizers where you can actually turn the front of the lens independently and you can actually control the angle that the polarization is going to go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put my model in the car. I'm going to turn on my lights. I'm going to get my cameras up. I'm doing video. I might yell action. And I'm going to go ahead and dial this in and turn the circular polarizer to where the glare on the windshield disappears. And, and these work great. And so if you're shooting like a landscape and you want a deeper sky or say like you're shooting that pretty waterfall and you're trying to get that nice picture that you see that you see that you want to mount in a gallery, this will take that glare off the water so you can see those rocks running through that stream. So polarized filters are awesome for that reason. Uh, whenever I'm shooting any type of product photography in my studio or my basement studio, should I say, I'm doing the same thing. Say like I'm shooting... Uh, a watch of some sort and I've got I've got my lights positioned to where I'm not getting a huge specular highlight coming into the into the camera but maybe the glares a little bit too much on the face of the watch I'll go ahead and adjust the polarized filter so it takes that glare off the off the camera the other type of filter that I absolutely love to use are neutral density filters and you might ask yourself what the heck is a neutral density filter? Well, neutral density filters simply cut the light out of your exposure. It's just like putting sunglasses over your eyes. Well, you're saying, well, when, when, when might I need this? 
why would I ever need to cut light out? Well, say like I'm outside and I've got my subject sitting there in front of my camera and I've got my speed light or in this situation probably a studio light, a thousand watt light on them. So I now have the power to overpower the sun. But in able to get my ambient exposure right, I'm now having to stop down, clear down to like an F16 or maybe I'm even closing it up to an F22. Well, I want a shallow depth of field on my model. I want that I want my subject, my human subject, to pop out for the photo. But since the sun's so bright outside, I have to stop down. What can I do? Well, I'm gonna go ahead, and these are Koken filters. They normally have a, a holder that goes on these, which we don't have right now, unfortunately. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this. It has a holder. That, and I'm gonna put the sunglasses on front of my lens. I'm simply putting sunglasses on front of my lens, which is now gonna cut down that light, which is gonna allow me to go ahead and open up my aperture where I can be out in the bright sunlight and shoot at that f2.8 if I want to, you know? And then still have my, have my light or my studio strobe firing at full power and I can still get a good exposure. So what's good about the Koken filters is that they're relatively budget. Uh, the, the holder is a square holder. It screws onto the front of your lens on your, on your mount. And you can stack these things pretty deep. Uh, I know for those of you who are shooting DSLR video right now with your cameras, which you're probably, which this is actually being filmed on right now, uh, there are times where you may want to use a neutral density filter outside or whatnot. A lot of your prosumer video cameras actually have neutral density filter settings built into them because once you're in video, there's no camera raw for video. What you see is what you have to get. So in order to do that, say like you're outside in the bright sunlight, you've got your 18 to 55 lens on your 70 or your, you know, your T2i or whatever you might be shooting. And you might want to be shooting at an f5.6. Well, you're going to drop that neutral density filter on there. Put the sunglasses on your lens. You know, just, just put your sunglasses on your lens. And now you've taken out some of that light so you can get that exposure or actually use that shallow depth of fill that you've been aiming for. So, a couple words of advice when purchasing filters. Uh, I believe, and this is just my personal opinion and my journey as a photographer, is that you, you get what you pay for in a filter. Uh, I have shot on professional glass, such as a 70 to 200 or, you know, a 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. You know, I'm shooting on professional glass with immersion, you know, with meniscus coated, you know, elements in there. Everything's perfect. And I put like a $10, $15 filter on the front of that lens. And I have seen, being a pixel peeper like I am and zooming into 100% in Photoshop, I've noticed the difference in my photos decrease. I've, I, I've had issues with fringing. I've had issues with aberration a little bit. And I, I can personally see the difference in color and contrast when I use a cheap filter. I believe that you get what you pay for in a filter. So if you're shooting with your nice 70 to 200, you know, which I uh, envy you for having one of those, go out there and spend 70 to $100 and get a quality filter either from the manufacturer such as Canon or Nikon or a B&W filter. Stay away from the cheap plastic filters that you get at some of your box stores. It's going to hurt your quality and even though you're protecting your lens, you're, you're losing a lot of the benefits that you get when you purchase that lens. As far as polarizers, a special word on these guys is that they come in circular and non-circular. If you were shooting with uh, any type of new DSLR, so unless you're an old film guy and using a different type of metering or you're not using autofocus, uh, the non-circular polarizers, depending on their position, can in fact interfere with some of the autofocusing functions and even the metering functions of the camera. So if you're shooting a DSLR, which 90% of us are, make sure you get a circular polarized filter versus your standard gradiated one or static one. So I'm Big Ben with Equip Tips. I'm waiting for your emails. Go ahead and ask me questions on these. In summary, make sure you keep your lens safe, wrap them up, put a filter on the ends of them, Put a UV filter to protect that glass in the event that you crash into the angry mother-in-law. 
Go ahead and try out some of the polarized filters. I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Whether you're a landscape photographer shooting that precious waterfall moment, or you're shooting a portrait of someone in front of a vehicle, you're at that local car show, or just out having fun shooting any type of metal object or something with specular highlights. Go ahead and try them. I'm Big Ben with Equip Tips, and I bid you happy shooting.